Zidane Danny, Electro Ninja here, and welcome back to Electro Ninja's Lab. In today's video, we are going to be talking about <sighs> Mega Leech, which, yes, it took me a way too long to actually watch the episode and way too long to get this video out, but I am finally here, ready to talk to you guys about this episode, as well as talk to you about Crocodile tomorrow, hopefully, as long as nothing bad happens, or chaos it's probably going to happen. Chaos is probably going to just go crazy. Anyways, let's talk about Mega Leech. This episode was really, really fun. Getting to see a lot more from other characters. And that's honestly something that I'm finding really interesting about this season. Is that this is really the season of the other Miraculous Holders. Well, obviously we still get those important aspects for Adrian and for Marinette, this is the epi or this is the series or season that is really focusing on the other characters and basically how they have improved over the time and have become better. Better people, better humans in general. And honestly, it makes a lot of sense that these people are improving so much. And it's honestly, like I said, really awesome to get to see these really awesome character moments. And also, I just have to say that uh, frickin' Ivan and Milen are just so adorable. And adorkable. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> just the fact that um, Milen calls Ivan Teddy and Ivan calls Milen Little Mouse. And it's just like, ah! <gasps> It's so adorable. It, it's cute. And it makes a lot of sense for them. Oh my gosh. I, I can't wait for Ivan to get his Miraculous one of these days. But this episode was specifically focusing on the idea that Milen and Ivan are protesters. And they've been protesting something that is really, really bad. That is honestly happening way too much. One of the big things that we often talk about when we're dealing with environmental issues is that um, big companies need to do more to stop this huge problem by stopping the pollution, not uh, figuring out better ways for them to produce the different things that they're making, which does not include cu cutting down trees. Seriously, let the trees continue to live. But that is basically the idea of this whole episode, that the mayor is trying to create a huge building that will suck up the pollution and filter it out to make new fresh air while basically everyone else is trying to say no we need the trees to be the ones who are doing this and the fact is that you guys are wanting to make water bottles what what oh my gosh there is so much prob so many problems here and also there are a lot of other problems this is a very political episode that if you don't know what's what was going on over in France, um, yeah, just, uh, know that this is, a this is a lot of talk about a lot of the political issues that are actually going on in France right now. Like, people are, ac uh, cops are actually arresting people for protesting and other things. There is a lot to it, and I do not know enough about it to actually give a actual statement but the fact is that things are not good in France right now and this is a very big discussion about that which uh yeah this is not something that is really a easy topic for anyone to talk about so if especially if you don't know everything about it which I don't either so I'm not gonna say anymore because I don't know enough anyways moving on so basically everyone stands up to stop this because it is going to be bad it's going to cause more pollution in france in paris it's going to cause a lot of problems moving forward and uh yeah it's uh it's not a great look especially and marinette's not too happy about it either because she has to deal with all of it because it's right outside her window yeah I also have to say that I love that almost all of the parents actually come in to say, stop 
we support our kids. We are 100% on their side. And it's just like, what the frick? Ugh. And it's kind of annoying because uh, I, I'm also kind of, well, I'm glad, but I'm also a bit annoyed that Roger Cop uh, does actually say, uh, no, I'm siding with the protesters at this moment. Um, after a bit of convincing, but, um, even though Sabrina is on Chloe's side, who Chloe is just a polluter, let's just be honest, Chloe is awful, I can't wait for her to get run over by a bus, um, anyways, uh, also, I do have to say that I'm, I kind of love this episode, because it's one of those episodes that is, uh, kind of in a weird situation, um, let me actually pull up the schedule of the episodes before I actually say something stupid. So, um, yeah, for those of you who aren't aware, this is episode 10 in chronological order, which we still haven't seen, uh, Gabriel Agreste or Psycho Medium, which are the two episodes, uh, which are two episodes before that, which, okay, Gabriel Agreste, that's gonna be fun to deal with, um, and then, but... This is close to the halfway point. It's not quite there, and more than likely we will be getting some information soon about the first half of the season actually making its way over to Netflix or to Disney+. Plus. Um, I'm honestly not sure exactly what the situation is there, though, because technically Disney owns the broadcasting rights, I believe, here in America, but Netflix owns the rights to streaming, I think. Exact details are really hard to deal with. Um, can can uh, Disney just get all of the rights for this? Because, like, for streaming and stuff? Because I think that they could probably actually get this stuff in order. Uh, <laughs> that's beside the point. Um, anyways, so yeah, Mega Leech is happening. And that was, it, like I said, it's, it's a weird episode. Because it feels like a bit of a halfway point or a season finale it was the it was an episode where people saw the pictures and stuff and were like this is the season finale and i was like no it's not like not even close like you guys have seen optigami right and you've seen the trailers for this yeah they were very clear to show that this is happening before optigami like completely like there is complete evidence that this is happening before Optigami. Like, they specifically show scenes from this episode in different positions to show uh, in Optigami to show that this is happening before Optigami, which is, like, the halfway point. Because from that point onward, uh, Alia has the miraculous full-time. So, yeah. Um... Also, uh, yeah, everyone has their Miraculouses, or gets pulled in to use their Miraculouses. But it's also really interesting to note that Ladybug only grabs the people that would actually be very helpful in this situation. She pulls in uh, Pegasus, because Pegasus can actually... Or, not Pegasus, whatever his name is. Um, uh, basically, he, she pulls in Max because Max can get someone close enough to actually um, uh, to do something to freaking Mega Leech. Um, she pulls in Vespira because she can stun Mega Leech. She pulls in Carapace because he can contain all of the bugs and everything while she collects them all. She pulls in. Kagami, because she can collect them all into that little, into the circle, and nobody else at all, like, uh, did they need someone to confuse the enemy? Nope, so no Kim. Did they need someone to create an illusion? Nope, so no, uh, freaking, uh, what's your, uh, why am I, no Alia, or Rena Rouge, um, and lots of other characters as well, but, and yes, they needed someone who would be small enough to actually go in, so she knew that she would need someone to be a multi-mouse, and since she can't do it because she's being Ladybug, she calls in her best friend to be, 
she calls in Milen to be that person because Milen has been a great aid in this time. Which also, I was kind of hoping that Milen would actually find out about Marinette's secret identity at this point because of the fact that, yeah, um. That was actually really weird. Also, I was kind of hoping that they would actually um, show that Cat Noir is actually using his black ears instead of his normal ears, which it kind of is. Because we see a uh, freaking... Um, we see Milen as Polymouse, I think she is right now, uh, jump in, but she's jumping towards his black ear, which is up on his head. Which is just kind of a weird situation to just think about that that ear is basically functioning as his real ear right now. That's a bit of a weird situation. Obviously, there's a lot of weird stuff going on, so we're not going to deal with all of that. But also, um, yeah, he's too big. <laughs> Freaking Mal Dictator, or Mini Dictator, whatever his name is, um, in this new form. He's, uh, he's too, he's too big to fit in your ear. I mean, he's, basically, people are able to hold his, uh, freaking, they're able to see him, and yet he's apparently going through people's ears, and it's just like, the fudge? Like, people are able to hold this guy in their hands like this, and it's like, no, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, that's... Like, that's a weird situation, to say the least. Um, uh, yeah, it, size is a weird situation in this whole scene. Uh, let's just, uh, keep moving forward. <laughs> oh, but honestly, yeah, this episode was really fun, just getting to see how everyone handled it. And it was also really fun to see that the Miraculous object, and so Miraculous is, we know, they don't split off with people. They don't... Uh, they don't duplicate. But it does now appear that certain objects will duplicate if someone is holding the Mouse Miraculous with them when they go small. And when they duplicate themselves. So, objects like the Lucky Charm, they will s split with them. Which, therefore, leads me to believe that the only objects that will not is objects like Miraculouses. And as such, the only object that will actually duplicate itself for the Miraculous is that of, well, the Mouse Miraculous, because it has to duplicate for its owner. And basically, that is basically the marker. Maybe it doesn't actually separate with them, but if we have seen it actually with everyone, so, uh, yeah. Not 100% certain. Details are hard to deal with. <laughs> also, I do have to say that I really like that um, the in-disguise charm actually changes for each person. If you actually look at it, the charm changes to whoever is currently holding it. Which makes me realize a lot of other things as well. Uh, we actually mentioned, uh, I think I mentioned it when we did the video about the New York special. In the New York special, we actually understand that there's both a normal way that you can say to become a holder of the Miraculous. So, for example, um, Tiki Spots On or many others. Um, but there's also an evil way to handle it. Basically, uh, people can actually choose how exactly they are going to command their Kwame to basically work for them. So Hawk Moth uses Dark Wings Rise, and um, I think that Spread My Feathers is just gonna stay the same no matter what because Nali's not necessarily evil, she's kind of a true neutral, I guess. Uh, well, more lawful neutral. She's weird to say the least. She's not evil necessarily, but she's not good. So I guess, yeah, Lawful Neutral is probably the best way to explain that. Um, uh, so she's, yeah, she's in a weird situation. So she's still kind of using Dusu's powers the correct way, um, from what it sounds like. But 
Gabriel is certainly not. He tells the frickin', um, uh, he tells, uh, the pirate in the New York special how to activate the abilities. But, later down, when Sparrow is getting the powers, she uses a different word. And it's kind of an interesting factor that basically each, the miraculous is kind of function in a different way. Basically, there is a way that you can command the miraculous uh, or the Kwame to work for you, or you can let the Kwame and you work together. And that is basically how the good guys function. It, it's weird. It's a very weird situation, and I don't really want to get too much in depth with it. But yeah. Where was I talking? Oh, right. I was supposed to be talking about how the freaking charm is different in its disguise form, which it is, which, wow, that's actually really cool that the, not every, as far as we, we've seen, not every single miraculous object changes its hidden state, but it is clear that it does sometimes do so. And I think that that's actually an important thing to realize is that it does happen. The time, uh, for example, uh, freaking the stopwatch that is, uh, freaking, uh, Fluff's object probably has changed multiple times because pocket watches are a relatively new object. So more than likely just a few hundred years ago, it was a completely different object because we know that time, the idea of time has existed for a really long time. So, more than likely, when that started, uh, the, uh, the miraculous object was just a sundial, maybe? It's kind of hard to say, to say, to say the least. But it's rather interesting to just think about all the ways that the miraculous have, have changed over the years. And that even between different people, the hidden charm can act differently. Honestly, if you think about it, uh, Marinette's earrings probably would look very different on somebody who, well, isn't her. Um, I mean, we've seen that that is the case when Adrian is holding them. They're a lot more, well, they're not circular. They're straight edges, which, and corners, and it's really interesting. Needless to say, there's a lot to that. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to talk about things as things get more chaotic. Speaking of which, uh, Send a Monster Theory is coming up very soon. I've already recorded it, so look forward to that video coming out like in the next few days. So, yeah, uh, that will happen after Crocodile, but it is, it is, it does exist. It's just needing to be edited. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like, leave your thoughts and theories down in the comments below. If you are going to leave a theory, make sure to say theory review somewhere in your comment. And of course, if you guys do want to support the channel even more, then definitely head down to the description and check out all of our links down there, including our social medias, our other channels, and ways you can support us financially, including the merch store, the book, and of course, our Patreon, which a big thank you to our current patron, Sheenie. But anyways, guys, I have been Electra Ninja, and I will see you guys next time. But on!